My name is Glenn Roby. I'm the BC for Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont for Contech Engineered Solutions. I was a market manager with Big R Bridge when they were acquired by Contech in 2019. And I've been with the, between the two companies, I've been in the bridge market for over 10 years. Prior to being in the bridge industry, I spent over 10 years in the precast market, service in both bridge and retaining wall needs among, the, among other products. And my role as a bridge consultant is to support your design, your site specific designs, as well as construction of various products. Let me know how I can assist, no matter what stage your project, project might be in. We've got uh, a little, about a half hour, so let me get started. Someone may ask you if you're interested in an apple and you may be thinking you're gonna get a Red Delicious. And as with many things, there are lots of different choices. And the reason that we wanna make sure we're very clear on what we specify. And when we're looking at a stream crossing, the pipe on the right, which was likely reclaimed from a paper mill at some point, may have been a perfectly acceptable solution for a water crossing, but now aware of stream smart design, ensuring ecologically appropriate crossings, as well as limiting maintenance that may stem from undersized structures, we look at options that serve both goals, such as this such as this modular bridge, which was installed very quickly, as well as very economically. Michael, do you have my- Glenn, uh, are, Okay, so are you trying to advance your slides? Yes, I am. Oh, there's your apples. There's <laughs> your pipe, okay. Okay, I've got, uh, apparently the, screen, the screens aren't lined up the way they were the other day. So okay. my apologies. We're back on track. Okay, so here's our pipe that was pulled from a likely a paper mill. And here's our modular bridge, which obviously is appropriate uh, structure selection for the same stream crossing. I'm going to run through rolled girder modular bridges, as well as some bridge options, touching on design, fabrication, installation, some abutment information, including bin wall and MSC wall, as well as some plate structure information I hope is new to you. When considering any bridge option, design is key to a successful project. Following AASHTO national standard LRFD design methodology using current HL93 loading, as well as owner specified vehicles, you're confident that the bridge will meet its site specific, site -specific loading needs. Incorporating test level guardrail, also meeting AASHTO standards, show consideration for this design element, not leaving it to an arbit arbitrary based on what someone may think is sufficient. Annual certification, fabrication certifications, endorsements, ensure you are getting what you pay for in a safe, reliable structure on your project. Fabrication certifications from AISC range from SBR, approved for weld of unspliced rolled girdle, girder bridges up through ABR, advanced major, approved to fabricate vehicular bridges that require more sophisticated care for fit up regarding geometric tolerances. Without proper design and fabrication, even the best crossing layout is incomplete. So I encourage you to make certain that your structure on your site meets federal standards. I'm going to go through a two piece modular set the use of precast sills, a stone bed detail, bearing assemblies, 
limited bolted connections, as well as impact rated guardrails. This precast sill is usually 30 inches wide, 18 inches deep, and varies in width depending on deck width. And you'll see from this cross section, a, an isolated stone bed underneath a precast sill. Always a good idea to provide a well-compacted, well-drained material under a sill so that we know that frost is mitigated and that the sill is set on good soils that can be easily leveled, truing up the foundation. As with most remote locations, modular bridges are usually installed using very light equipment. As you can see, two backhoes, one from either end of the bridge, setting this module onto precast sills. I'm going to share a case study, this one on a heavy haul road. Many of you are probably very familiar, familiar with the Stud Mill Road. And this project over Allen Brook had several challenges. The meandering stream skewed underneath the roadway and the long span was required to accommodate that skew and be low profile. And with the many players involved, it was very important that federal standards for design were met. So for that reason, the modular bridge was chosen. And with these projects, per typical, the bridge modules being loaded on and brought in on a flatbed truck, often stacked up. And then the site is prepared with natural stream bottom, the natural stream bottom with precast sills in the background. And the precast sills have bearing assemblies which provide connectivity between the concrete foundations and the bridge beams themselves. And there you can see the backhoes positioning the modules into place. And underneath the structure itself, mid diaphragm splices, which use a four bolt connection, usually in three positions. And then up on the deck, you'll see the small red arrows pointing out mid deck splices, bolted splices. And on the right, the large red arrow shows the side dam, which extends up over the structural decking, at least three and a half inches. And that side dam is really there to capture a wearing surface for the structural deck. Wear surface most frequently being gravel or timber running planks or direct pave or concrete. And here we see in profile a precast sill with the bearing assembly, guardrail posts and then sheet pile back wall behind the bridge, retaining the fill from the ends of the bridge. Underneath the structure, we'll see the bearing assembly, which connects the bottom plate to the precast sill below, as well as the bottom flange of the beam to the pop top plate of the bearing assembly. This is, ensures uniform load being brought down through the foundations for good long-term performance. And looking across west on Stud Mill Road, the gravel wear surface in place and a TL3 guardrail. And since the guardrail is flush with the outside of the deck, the entire travel area is usable compared to, say, for instance, Jersey barriers. Running planks, another very common wear surface. These are oftentimes factory installed. So when the bridge is set, the 
structure is ready for immediate traffic. These timber planks could easily be a full width wear surface. And you may picture, see at the top of the image that holes have been left in the decking. And these holes have been left where the pick points are. So shackles can easily, easily be set in and the structure be moved to a alternate location. We certainly realize that a impact rated guardrail is not always the best option for a specific site. For instance, a blueberry operation that may have some very wide equipment that hangs over the side. And so these timber curbs, which through bolt through scupper blocks to backing plates down underneath the bridge deck, make a very stout arrangement and possibly a good option for your site. Now I wanna pause for just a minute and uh, speak a little bit about different coatings and options that you may wanna consider on a project. It was, uh, weathering steel was discussed last week and Core 10, which is the brand name for weathering steel, develops a hard protective patina on the outside through a series of wet and dry cycles and with that, the protective patina makes weathering steel a low maintenance option. It also might be considered a green option as there are no coatings to leave at the job, the project site. And also has a uh, quite an impact for the, since it's the lowest cost option. Painted steel, all of context bridge facilities have proper preparation for coating with an SP6 or SP10 blast, as well as sophisticated paint endorsements. But it's important that if specifying painted steel, that proper prep and coating is indeed what you get. Galvanized steel, certainly the highest quality and very interested to learn more about that in the next presentation. But galvanized steel does have some limitations and depending on span, perhaps the bridge may need to be broken down into smaller components. And with that, there may be additional field assembly and or there's certainly a cost associated with galvanized steel. So when we think about where weathering steel is going, we like to think about the environment. And since the icing chemicals and similar are what deteriorate weathering steel the fastest. And the remote locations that most of these projects are in, weathering steel may be a good option for you. As you see this tractor pulling in one end of a modular bridge under a zip line, and then the excavator pushing the far end out onto the far bank. As you can see, With uh, no access, now there's quick and efficient access to the far side. Sometimes increased span is not sufficient to accommodate different grade changes. So looking at some different options, a galvanized riser beam on top of a precast sill may, have, may be a consideration. And this two or three foot grade change still accommodates the bearing assembly on top. Once we go up into larger elevation changes, we look for different options, such as this galvanized steel bin wall. And the bin wall with its vertical posts and horizontal corrugated plates are easily bolted together. And the isolated soil cells are often used with, in conjunction with local materials. With the ability to have wall heights excess of 20 feet, these bin walls can make an excellent choice, such as you see here with precast sills already set on top and some excavators moving the first module into position. 
this local project in Blanchard Township, Maine, using the Binwall technology, as this Mar Mariaville project did as well. Other options for foundations, and I believe Kathy referred to these wire-faced walls last week more generically as hill thicker walls, have an L-shaped facing unit. The L return on the bottom connects to soil reinforcement units with a simple C-clip. These soil re galvanized steel re soil reinforcement units extend out typically 0.7 the height of the wall. So you might think about a 10 foot high wall having a seven foot long strap length. The face unit for these wire wall systems are usually handled in one of two ways. For a more temporary application, a filter fabric is applied to the face. In more permanent applications, a stone material is on the face, separating the UV and protecting the UV nature of the filter fabric behind it. The wire walls installed at many geometric angles, and you can see it goes up very quickly. If the two foot tall units, if you were to count the six layers, you'll see that they're already up 12 feet and then finished off with a precast leveling pad, as well as a modular bridge. Since these wire walls are very flexible from a geometric standpoint, they make excellent head walls for corrugated structures, such as this temporary bridge application down in Southern Massachusetts, or a permanent application, this one on a Plum Creek project. And although uh, cast in place concrete might not be well suited out 70 miles out the Golden Road, this particular four by four foundation was cast in a trench form. So the excavator pulled out the material, reinforcing was placed, the concrete was cast, and then a simple keyway was field cut after the fact. Deep corrugation profiles in structural plate provide very large spans up in the 80 foot range. And this 55 foot span plus was installed over a weekend shutdown. This first two and a half foot long ring was installed about 9.30 or 10 in the morning. And throughout that Saturday, the rest of the 50 foot long plates were assembled. And at the end of the day, the structure was ready for final torquing, as well as field grouting to the cast in place foundation. The structure was open to traffic below, well ahead of the Sunday evening shutdown. Here you see it in service with traffic on top as two field built conventional bridges were installed on either side. Another foundation option that might be a consideration would be a galvanized steel form with pre-tied reinforcement already installed. Footings that are all, all pre-sized specific to the job site, as well as having open bottoms, ensure that concrete has uniform placement and bearing on the subsoils below. In this case, a plate structure is set onto the prefabricated pre forms and then allows for immediate placement of concrete. The concrete not only fills the foundation form, but it also locks the plate structure into place. So very quick, very easy, very efficient and ready for backfill. I provide this image to show 
from the top with very small structures. There are lots of steel options as we move through down in our modular bridges, as well as steel trusses. So lots of different options for lots of different projects. And as you think about a project that you may be working on, certainly don't hesitate to reach out if we can provide some additional options or insights that perhaps you may not have thought of. And with that, I'll see if there's some questions.